When asking any fan of the Kanto region what the best starter Pokemon is for clearing the game, they'll probably tell you Bulbasaur, then immediately point out how amazing it is against the first two gyms and that it resists the third one. But my question to those people is, what about the rest of the game? Because in a speedrun, that beginning portion only makes up about one third of the entire game. In fact, Bulbasaur almost clears Brock slower than Charmander, has a worse time handling threats after clearing Misty, and can't keep up with Squirtle no matter how hard it tries. While the reasons for picking it are valid to an extent, I'd like to open up your world as to why picking Bulbasaur early is only setting you up for a worse time later. Bulbasaur as of right now is the fifth fastest Pokemon in the world for a Pokemon Fire Red Leaf Green speedrun, being outcompeted by not only the other starters, but even Pokemon such as Jinx and Clefable as well. And when looking at some of these alternate Pokemon like Jinx, you might just notice that even they will start with Squirtle before switching to the new main. This is because Squirtle does a better job at clearing the portions of the game that Bulbasaur fanatics love to boast about. How you might ask? Well, it's likely because of the terrible level up moveset that they gave to Bulbasaur compared to Squirtle. When Squirtle levels up to 7, it'll get access to Bubble, which is admittedly a much worse move than Vine Whip, but unfortunately, this little cabbage needs an extra 3 levels compared to Squirtle, just to get a decently offensive move into its move pool, forcing speedrunners to fight extra trainers before reaching Brock, and setting you up for even more disappointment down the line before you can even reach Misty. And that disappointment is felt heavily on Route 3 and Mount Moon when comparing Bulbasaur to the other starters. Charmander and Squirtle will both have access to much more powerful moves than Bulbasaur that clear out all the bug trainers much faster than it can. And it gets even worse inside of Mount Moon when coughing becomes a required mon you need to clear out. This slowdown puts Charmander and Squirtle a whopping 5 minutes ahead of Bulbasaur, who will now handle Misty slower than both of them, even compared to Charmander. It's quite disappointing to say the least, but I'd argue the biggest disappointment starts when you pick them up from the table, giving your rival access to Charmander. Doing this slowly builds up that rival's team to be much stronger than you. Since you now have to deal with two, then three, then four Pokemon that counter your Bulbasaur's precious grass and poison typing. So with all this weighing Bulbasaur down, how does the speedrun deal with it? Well, let's start from the very beginning. When picking Bulbasaur for a Fire Raid Leaf Green speedrun, it becomes quite apparent that the attack stat is the most important stat of them all. This makes natures such as Naughty and Lonely the most viable option. And on top of this, Bulbasaur will be manipulated to have at least 28 IVs in attack every single time. And this all has to do with the learn set of Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, and Venusaur. It's really bad, and there's no way to sugarcoat it unless you abuse your attack set. Special attack will be useful for those portions of the game that use grass moves pretty well like Brock, Misty, Surge, and Rock Tunnel, but won't be the best option for too much longer after that. But before we talk about these moves, I'd like to talk about today's sponsor, Factor. Factor is a service that delivers ready-made meals to your doorstep when you sign up for Factor. Factor's chef-created meals are fresh, never frozen, and designed by dietitians to ensure every meal is packed with premium, science-backed nutritional quality. So no more meal prep, no more dishes, and no more unhealthy fast food. And if you're on a set diet, that's no problem for Factor, since you can pick any dietary meal preferences like keto, calorie smart, and vegan and vegetarian meals. And with more than 27 plus meal options each week, you'll never get tired of Factor. Check out my link in the description or go to go.factor75.com and use code FACTORSE35864 for 50% off your first box. The use of normal type moves is something much more effective than Bulbasaur's grass type move. And a lot of it has to do with the physical special split. You see, the first big normal move that isn't tackle will be the move secret power. Secret power has a secret power to it, depending on what terrain you're battling in. This effect won't make a difference for speedrunning, but the base power of the move does, on top of the fact that Ivysaur doesn't get mega punch or mega kick like the other starters do. And it's a shame, because we have to fight a whole extra trainer just to get it. But it's all for the sake of speed and ends up being faster than avoiding it altogether. The next normal move is easily the third best move Venusaur will get access to once we're outside of Rock Tunnel. We'll bike straight through Lavender Town into this gate, then straight to this move tutor who will give us access to the amazing move Return. Return reaches a maximum base power of 102 once a Pokemon has reached the maximum friendship level 
of 255. And there are a ton of things that will get you some easy friendship points over time, such as moving in the overworld, leveling up, using X items, and the best of them all, vitamins, which will become a massive part of getting Venusaur up to the peak strength it'll need to face threats that resist grass moves. One other thing Bulbasaur lovers will flaunt is early access to the final evolution compared to the other starters. And it's a pretty nice thing, but unfortunately, we're at a point where it's a little too late to make a bigger impact because the other two starters have already made their way in and out of the game corner by the time Venusaur exits the rock tunnel. It's truly sad, but let's not count them out just yet because this giant piece of lettuce is not done cooking. When it comes to the game corner, Giovanni's goons will be destroyed easily by this giant lettuce since it now has the move return and is backed up by its final evolution. But inside of Celadon Mart is an even more powerful normal move than return. And that's the move Hyper Beam. Hyper Beam will be used when return just isn't powerful enough to KO. And luckily for Gen 3 Venusaur, it's a physical move it can take advantage of due to the physical special split. Gym leaders and trainers such as Erika, Koga, Silphko, and Blaine will be hit with a nice Hyper Beam to the face after a few X attacks, but will be handled in a much different order compared to Squirtle and Charmander. This is all thanks to the open world nature of Pokemon Fire and Leaf Green, where Pokemon like Venusaur can delay Erika until the six badge when they have Blizzard, or how Charizard can delay Misty and Surge until they have enough levels to one hit KO them. And for Venusaur, this gym will be Blaine's fire type Pokemon, since they have two Intimidators, hit Venusaur pretty hard, and will need a bit of extra setup to even get through the fight. This wouldn't be so hard if we could face Giovanni's gym early for extra levels and the ability to obtain Earthquake. But because the gym is locked before earning seven badges, we can't exactly do that. But what we can do is a bit of preparation for the Elite Four once we've entered Saffron City for what I consider to be the best and most hilarious move that Venusaur needs to learn for speedrunning Pokemon Fire Red Leaf Green. When acquiring a Poke Doll and going into this house inside of Saffron City, into this little girl's room on the top floor, she'll immediately notice the doll and teach you the move Mimic in return for giving her the doll. And this move is the reason why the Elite Four are much more manageable. Because logically, if Venusaur's moves suck, maybe using someone else's moves will be a little bit better? And that statement couldn't be more true with moves like Hyper Beam, Return, Giga Drain, and Mimic once you've entered the Elite Four, leaving you wide open to stealing faster moves from Agatha and Lance. When setting up for the Elite Four sweep, Lorelei becomes quite easy with enough X specials combined with Giga Drain to take her out with ease. Bruno is also quite simple when Giga Drain can Oko both of his Onyxes for free, followed by a bit of setup to KO his fighting Pokemon with X attack boosted normal moves. But Agatha is where things become complicated. Sure, most of her poison types can be taken out with Return, Hyper Beam, or Earthquake, but the real problem lies in her Haunter and Gengars. Agatha always leads with Genjar, which presents a problem due to the Levitate ability combined with a Ghost Poison typing. But this leaves the perfect opportunity to set up X speeds and X attacks until it uses the move Shadow Punch. Shadow Punch is a physical move that never misses. So when you copy it with Mimic, not only does it hit through those nasty double teams, but it also dunks on the rest of her ghost types with a ghost type move of your own. With Agatha down, Lance will be in a very similar boat as her, where Venusaur's move pull will be less effective than moves like Twister and Bite from Lance's Gyarados to sweep him with Mimic. And that fight right there will be the last time that we use Mimic, as the final trainer waiting for us is the one that brought us all this pain throughout our journey. And he's not done with that just yet. You see, his lead Pidgeot carries Sand Attack and Aerial Ace, which would force us to set up even more if we didn't have this strategy. Instead of leading with Venusaur, our best option will be Lapras. Lapras is not only an amazing HM friend, but also comes packaged with Parish Song a move that gives you a guaranteed KO on every Pokemon on the field three turns after using it. And the way speedrunners use it is with the power of Magikarp. With the Magikarp you can buy inside of the Mount Moon Pokemon Center, we can send them out on the final turn of Paris Song, which will force the enemy AI to switch out no matter what, all because he knows better. But with how the AI determines who to switch to on the team, it will only consider Executor out of all the other five Pokemon when you send out Magikarp onto the field. And this is all because it has a super effective move on Magikarp and is something that wouldn't work on Lapras 
since it's also an ice type. By sending out Lapras, it would prioritize Rhydon, since it not only has a super effective move, but has a worse type matchup against Lapras over Exeggutor. It's very weird reasoning, but this will help a ton to guarantee Exeggutor, since its moves can't really touch Venusaur, giving you a free but complicated setup that's required to beat the game as fast as possible. But even then, Venusaur will need so much setup compared to the other starters on just about every single fight it comes across. And it's all because of its awful move pull, grass typing, and struggles that it faces thanks to a rival that becomes much stronger than you when you pick Bulbasaur in the first place. Making Bulbasaur an awful Pokemon for speedrunning. Subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this video.